This recording will contain a quick overview or demo of how to set up claims and IFD access for Microsoft Dynamics CRM 2011. Our first action will be to start the configuration of the ADFS server. We will open IIS and generate a certificate for the ADFS server. In this demo we'll be using domain sign certificates With a certificate created, we now have to add the certificate to the website. We do that under bindings. And we can view the certificate to validate that we picked the correct certificate. We can also see that it is a fully signed certificate that was signed by the root CA. With that task accomplished, we can now go into ADFS and begin the configuration. We will be creating a new federation service and a standalone federation server. And we can see that this certificate has been selected. If a wildcard certificate was selected, this field would be white and we would be able to type in the actual name, the actual URL that we would want to use for the ADFS site. In this case, we did not use a wildcard certificate on the ADFS server, therefore the field is grayed out. While this is running, we can go on to the CRM server and configure the, the CRM URLs through the deployment manager. The URLs on the CRM server will have to match a certificate that is on the machine. In this case, all roles are on one server, and we'll be creating a wildcard certificate that is rooted in Contosa.com. On the CRM server, we will also be using a domain sign certificate. And in this case, we'll be using a wildcard certificate. And the wildcard certificate will help us satisfy the IFD requirements. If we were only configuring CRM with claims access and not IFD access, we would be able to utilize a regular standard single name certificate. With the certificate created, we need to bind it to the CRM website. Once the bindings has been created on the CM website, we will need to also create DNS records for both the ADFS server and for the CRM server. We'll be creating the records inside the C inside the Contosa.com domain. So now we create a record for adfs.contosa.com. Resolution for that record is going to the ADFS server name .local. And it is going to .local because that is the domain where the ADFS server is residing. We will also need to create a record for the CM server. records in place, we can validate if the ADFS server has completed. 
the ADFS server has completed the install. We're waiting to see if the configuration database loads successfully. And the configuration database in ADFS is configured successfully. Our next step will be to go on to the CRM server. On the CRM server, we will need to open the deployment manager again. With the deployment manager open, we will now need to run claims based authentication. The first step in the configuration wizard is to type in the URL for the Federation metadata on the ADFS server. Before clicking next, I prefer to validate that the URL is indeed valid. And it brought back the Federation metadata from our ADFS server. We now have to select a certificate. Any certificate on the CM server will suffice. In this case, we'll reuse the certificate that we used for binding to the CRM website. The CM server is now configured for claims. I opened up the log file so I could grab the URL for the CM internal URL federation metadata. We now have to take this URL and go on to the claim server and validate that we can access the CM Federation metadata. And this will most likely fail because we're missing one small step. I expect this to be a common error. What happens here is that the application pool that is running the CRM uh, services or the CM application pool account will need to have read writes to the encryption certificate that was selected during the CRM claims configuration based wizard. We'll open up a management console and add the certificates and this again is done on the CRM server. We'll add it for computer account Browse out to the certificate store, find the certificate that we used, go to all task, manage private keys, and add the account that is running the CRM service. We will validate that. And the CRM application pool account is van by network service. This is the primary one that we need to add. With that added, we should now be able to go back on the ADFS server and load the uh, CRM Federation metadata file. If it does not resolve, an ISV set might be a good idea on the CRM server. With the IF IS reset completed, we can try and reload the Federation metadata file again. And we can now see that we're loading the Federation metadata from the CRM server. The Federation metadata is essentially a recipe for what the CRM server needs in regards to claims from the ADFS server. We'll type in the URL I'll we'll shorten the name for the relaying party. It'll permit all users. And here we can see the different properties that was obtained from the XML file. We'll now need to add a few claims rules. We need to pass through an incoming claim. in a UPN claim and finally we will transform the Windows account name
the reason I use a descriptive name is that it has actually helped me memorize which claims are needed. When I look at the summary screen, I'm able to see exactly what I'm doing with each claim. We can now hit apply and OK. And there's still one item missing on a claims provider trust. We also need to add a claims rule. We can see that we have the Windows account name passed through and we have the primary SID. These are the values that we take from Active Directory and passing on the claims. But we do not have a claim for the UPN. So we will add a rule for that. Send LDAP attributes as claims. Now we can see that the claims we added on the relaying party also is existing on the claims provider trust from Active Directory. Windows account name, primary SID, and now UPN. After we created the new claims tool on the claims provider trust, and we've created the relaying party trust for the internal URL, it is time to test the URL and test the serum site. If you noticed it went really quick, I'll close it again. We actually was redirected from CRM to ADFS and then back over to ADFS or back over to CRM again after it has been authenticated. Notice the URL. It switches really fast once you authenticate it once. Internal access has now been set up for claims on the CRM server. We will now ex or we will now modify the CRM server to also accept internet facing URL. We will need to type in the URLs for our domain that we intend to have a organization appended to. The discovery service does not have an organization appended to it, therefore we must have a URL that can resolve to the CRM server. These URLs will have the organizations appended to them. I'll now go into that in more detail once all the configurations has been completed. This is the federation endpoint between the CRM server and ADFS server. This cannot match an organization. I can now go on to the ADFS server and configure a new relaying party for the external access endpoint. Before attempting to access this URL, we will need to ensure that we have DNS records in place. After controls.com should go to cmserver.controlzo.local we'll Take this URL and validate that it resolves in IE and we can see we've been able to pull up the external 
claims end by the external IFD endpoint from the CM server. We'll rename that. And we can see the different claims requirements on the external endpoint. One thing to notice that all these URLs should also resolve into the CM server. So, so far we've only added this endpoint, so we'll need to add the organization name and we'll also need to add the discovery service URL. We now need to add a few claims rules. And the claims rules are the same as before. We'll be passing through the primary set. And we need to pass through our UPN. And finally, we will need to transform the Windows account name into name. the rules in place. We're good to go. And we do not need to add anything to the claims provider to us this time because we already have the correct claims rules in place from when we configured it for claims. With that in place, let's go ahead and test accessing the external IFD URL. We'll type in the org name dot the domain name. And you can now see that we're getting a prompt for sign in. After that, we're now authenticated into the CM server using IFD. This is an error that uh, has been fixed. It still sometimes shows up. There's two workarounds to it. If you click away from the dashboard and then click back on the dashboard, the dashboard will load successfully. Also, if you run an IS reset on the CM server, the error should no longer occur. So let's prove that. If you have any loading errors after configuring IFD, it is a good practice to run an IS reset on the CM server. We'll go back on the ADFS server and attempt to access CM again. And we can see this time the dashboard loaded the first on the first try without any errors or issues.